Okay, for this function here, we are going to find local max and min values where the function is increasing and decreasing. We're going to find the function's concavity and its inflection points. Let's start with where the function is increasing and decreasing. We can do that by taking the first derivative. If we set this first derivative equal to zero, we can find the critical points of the function first. And I believe that this function can be factored. And if we do factor this function, we get two critical points. One is x equals one third, one is x equals three. What these critical points can do is allow us to split our interval up into pieces. Because we know that a function can only change from increasing to decreasing, or vice versa, at a critical point. So if we choose a test point from each one of these three intervals, and plug that test point into the first derivative, we can see if the function is increasing or decreasing on the entire interval. From this piece of the interval over here, I'm just going to choose x equals 0 as my test point. And I want to find the first derivative evaluated at x equals 0. You can see pretty quickly that that value is negative 3. What's important about that is that it's negative, And this tells us that our function is decreasing on the entire interval from negative infinity to 1 third. We can then choose a test point in between x equals 1 third and x equals 3, maybe x equals 1. And we can plug that into our first derivative. And I'm getting that the first derivative is 4, which is positive. So that says that on this entire interval up here, our function is increasing. Let's choose one more test point from this interval to the right of x equals 3. I'll choose x equals 4. I'm getting that this is negative 11, and uh, that is less than 0. That is a negative number. So we know that our function is decreasing on the entire interval from 3 to infinity. So let's summarize what we have so far. So, so far we know that our function decreases in the interval negative infinity to one third, and then decreases again on the interval three to infinity, and that our function increases from one third to three. What this tells us is that we must have a local minimum here at x equals one third, and we must have a local maximum here at x equals three. Okay, that's pretty good so far. We've answered the first couple of questions. But we also need to find the intervals uh, of concavity and where the inflection points might be. And we do that with the second derivative. So I'm going to leave myself just a little bit of room and take a second derivative here. And we can find our possible inflection points by setting the second derivative equal to 0. Solving for x, I get x equals 5 thirds as a possible inflection point. To determine if x equals 5 thirds is an actual inflection point, we need to look at our intervals of concavity and see if our concavity changes to the left and to the right of that possible inflection point. If we choose an x value to the left of 5 thirds, let's say x equals 0, and plug it into our second derivative, we get 10, which is a positive number, which means our function is concave up right here. If we choose an x value to the right of 5 thirds, maybe x equals 2, and plug that into our second derivative, I'm getting negative 2, which is less than 0, meaning our function is concave down on that interval. Let's summarize. We just found that the function is concave up on the interval negative infinity to 5 thirds here, and that the function is concave down everywhere else from 5 thirds to infinity. That tells us that our possible inflection point is in fact an inflection point because the concavity changes. Okay, this part scares me. Let's try to summarize all of this in a graph. Um, our function is decreasing uh, from negative infinity to one third and increasing from one third to three. Meanwhile, our function is concave up from negative infinity to five thirds. So our function should look something like this. Notice our function is concave up here, and then when x hits 5 thirds, our function changes concavity and starts heading downwards. And the function starts going downwards at x equals 3. So I'm going to make a slight amendment to this picture. I'm going to make x equals 3 right there, where we have a critical point. And x equals 1 thirds is a critical point right here. And for a better graph, well, you can just type it into Desmos or Wolfram Alpha or GeoGebra or something like that. Um, you can stop making fun of my artistic inabilities. Um, let's take a look at this entire problem.